Hello everyone. Um, today's Boxing Day 2013. Um, being the day after Christmas, I'm relatively hungover. I've got the house to myself, so I figured I'd make a little video of um, what I achieved on Christmas Eve. Obviously, I achieved getting drunk on Christmas, but that's not what we're here to talk about. Um, on Christmas Eve, um, a Transformer arrived for me for my 5E3 Fender Deluxe Reverb Clone. Oh, sorry, let me start that again. Fender Tweed Deluxe Clone that I built earlier. Um, one of the dangerous things about forums, you read a lot, you learn a lot, and then you realise, okay, maybe um, there is something to why my amplifier had a hell of a lot more gain and sound like a Mini Marshall. That is not to say it sounded bad, I think it sounded pretty good, but I was not out there to build the Marshall. I was building a 5E3 Tweed Deluxe, which isn't as gainy, um, and that's its intended purpose, really. The reason behind it, what I realised is that um, the Mojo Tone Transformer um, is, is wound a bit too hot. Now, in the... Um, in the data sheet it says uh, 385, 0, 385 um, volts, you know, set to tap, so I decided to um, get myself one of the classic tone ones, which has got, which is at, um, got 355 and a 0, 355 and also 330 on the inside there, so either 710 volts center tapped or 660. Now, one thing I learned when I replaced this transformer uh, Mojo Tone must have done their um, calculations, well, measurements on that transformer when it was unloaded. Because when I use the 710 center tap voltage, um, yeah, center tap winding of the transformer, I got pretty much the same voltages throughout. So I lowered it. Um, I use a 660 center tap taps. I did tell you I'm hungover, so pardon the stuttering, as well as the constant umming. But yes, I used the lower voltage winding. And uh, what I found was it um, the B plus fell within its um, sweet spot, as mentioned on the forums, of about 360 to 370 volts. Now, um, even though 710 center tapped, you know, said um, on the... Um, classic tone website that it was a reverse engineered um, transformer, you know, copied from an original. Um, back in the 50s, um, the mains coming out at, in America was a bit lower than it is now. So even though they reverse engineered it perfectly, um, I'd assume, because um, the mains are now higher, it resulted in you know, higher voltage on the output. So the 660 volt taps um, counteract that and bring it back to the way it would have sounded like in the 50s or the 60s. Now one thing um, I've read, now I recently finished reading the um, biography on Neil Young called Shaky, where he would mention that he could, um, or one of his roadies mentioned, um, they, he could tell when um, you know the voltage coming out of mains wherever he was touring was a bit high and you know put it down to black magic or whatnot. Um, through experiencing it now, I discovered why he was able to do that. It's because, well, when you know uh, a Fender Tweed Deluxe, when in the B plus is increased, you get more gain. Um, yeah, don't take my word for it. I'll give you a bit of a demo. You can compare to my previous video. Now, um, I've got the schematic over here. I'll just move it up there so I can get closer without my shadow going on it. Now, um, oh yeah, there's no voltages there. Now, you see two voltages there, one in red and one in black. The one in red was with the old transformer, and the one in black is with the replacement transformer. As you can see, that results in a lower B plus on the output tubes there. So, you know, 30 volts down may not sound like much in the grand scheme of things, but it makes a hell of a lot of um, sonic difference, um, for lack of a better term. And of course, you know, that all goes down, you know, further down the line where you got, you know, about 25 volts difference there, yada, yada, yada. It, it makes a difference. Now, um, I've got some soup that I'm about to eat, and I'll give you a bit of a demo, and you can have a listen um, to see if I'm talking a load of crap or not. Anyway, I'll just pause this for now, and um, see you in a tick. So here we are again. Um, um, if you take my word for it, I'm not going to exactly show you. Well, I could show you, but I can't be bothered. Um, the guitar, which is 
good old Les Paul. Um, is plugged into the high gain input of the bright channel. Bright channel, just like in the last video, is turned up to 7-ish. The normal channel is about 4.5. Tone is up all the way. Do not turn up the guitar? <laughs> Now that's with the um, volume turned up just a wee bit, um, I'll turn it up all the way. opinion um, it's not as distorted as it was before um, that's all assuming that the microphone on this camera that I'm using that camera that I'm looking into right now is picking up the picking up the sounds good enough I can't really say it's just a little consumer JVC jobby um, you be the judge um, there's also you know the possibility of YouTube compression really um, screwing up with the sound but I don't know <laughs> hot today so my playing is a wee bit better but that is subjective really um, Matt feel free to um, criticize my playing in the um, comments below people like doing that sort of thing hell I'm not boasting I'm pretty much a hack but anyway while I'm here I'm gonna put the let's pull away and let's pick out another guitar yes all right I've switched guitars I'm now playing a Japanese Fender Stratocaster in blue floral uh, maple fingerboard. The pickups are not stock, they're 69 Custom Shop Classics from Fender or whatever they call them, the ones as wound by Abigail who has since retired. If you don't know what I'm talking about, doesn't matter, it's irrelevant, but some people are stickler for details and want to know what's in these things. Uh, one little difference I have done to the amp settings is to back off the tone a bit because as anyone that knows about guitars knows, Fenders can be a bit Shrill, not necessarily shrill. Toppy is probably the better word. Shrill sort of gives negative connotations, but you know, some people like shrill. Some people, I don't know, some people like a lot of different things. Um, as I said, this is all subjective, but um, 5E3 with a fender, which is something you didn't hear in the previous video. So, bridge pickup. <laughs> Middle pickup. And I slipped. I told you. Told you I'd screw up sooner or later. Well, didn't I? Anyway, I screwed up. Uh, neck pickup. Alright, now time for the middle positions. The, uh, Bridge and middle pickup. And the uh, neck and middle pickup. So you can probably hear with the Fender being slightly lower output pickups than the P90s. Um, it doesn't break up as much, but it does break up. Um, after all, it is a Fender designed amp, it was probably most likely, uh, pff, well, I'd say it would have been made to sort of suit their guitars better than the competition, such as Gibson. Uh, back in the 50s, distortion isn't, wasn't exactly one of those things that were desi um, was desired. Um, it's a hell of a lot more desired now. Everyone knows distortion is good fun. But enough with my prattling on, um, actually. Bridge, and now middle. And now the next just in case anyone complains that I didn't solo, I just left that to a minimum. But anyway, I'm going to shut up and switch guitars to... 
Well, you'll see in the next scene. I'll leave that as a surprise. Next scene, um, next guitar. Whoopsie. There's you. There we go. It's got a bit of a. Hey, you can see the headstock. See that? Gretch. Alright. In case you haven't already guessed, I'm playing a Gretch. I have got. If this chord would shut up, I have got a 2002 Gretch Duojet 1957 reissue with the obligatory Bigsby. Let me see. Like a bit. See that? Oh, this is one of the joys of coily chords. They can be a bit messy when you've got your guitar turned down. Noisy, I should say. But anyhow, let's play this thing and um, let's hear what it sounds like through the Tweed Deluxe. Oh yeah, I failed to mention the tone control is now up full again, so because um, the, the single coils aren't as toppy. <laughs> the um, bridge pickup now on to both pickups and now the uh, neck pickup as it clicks into place One thing I failed to mention, and I have a habit of failing to mention things because this is all totally spontaneous and unrehearsed and all that sort of crap. Um, the um, very sensitive to picking dynamics. Now um, I'm using a three millimeter big stubby. So there it is. If it'll focus, maybe. Um, one of the fellows I used to work with used to refer to these things as wheel chocks because they're um, pretty thick, three millimeters to be exact. Um, I, I like them, but. Some people like to know what picks are being used, just so you know they can get an idea of you know tonal variations, yada yada yada, and all that sort of stuff. Guitarists being a pedantic bunch, present company included. Um, yes, so sensitive to picking dynamics as I pick harder, it distorts more. In other words. <laughs> Just like so. Yes. Um, have I got more guitars? Yes, I do. Let's see what we got next. Look at that, it's a Fender Telecaster. Butterscotch, Japanese 50s reissue. Not sure if 50s reissue, as you can see, it's got the 70s logo. I think it's the 70s logo. Yeah, anyway, it's got the stock pickups. Nothing special. Ash body, at least I think it's ash, it looks like ash, sounds like ash. Um, you can tell, hear that knock? That's ash. Nah, I'm talking crap. Anyway, let's go. Right? Right. Bridge pickup. <laughs> stuff up right at the start. Well, I wasn't even trying to recreate what I was playing, I was just noodling around. Anyway, more incessant noodling on the bridge pickup. the uh, Telecaster. Um, I think I've got one more guitar left. Yes I do. Alright. What is it? You shall find out. 
final guitar and we have got you recognize that it's a Gibson Flying V not stock when did I get this 2004 um, it's got a 57 classic plus in the bridge right there 57 classic in the neck slightly deadish strings but this being my only humbucker guitar you should have a slightly different sound to what you would have heard before. So anyway, starting on the bridge picker. <laughs> Alright, that's a fair bit of gain there. Um, not that it's a bad thing, gain is always good. Good, 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 good. Anyway, both pickups. <laughs> Finally, uh, neck pickup. <laughs> Obligatory noodling of the neck. Both pickups. <laughs> Finally the bridge pickup. It's starting to warm up in here, it's a little bungalow with some bloody hot valves going on. Bridge pickup. Yes, it is a very nice amp. Um, so there it is, um, picking up where I left off in the last demo. Um, testing it with several different guitars with the specified B plus of 360-ish volts um, as I previously stated in my other video all new old stock valves with a pair of GE that is General Electric 6V6 GTAs a Sylvania 12AX7 a... who made it? General Electric 12AY7 and a 5Y3 GT which appears to be a rebranded General Electric which itself is probably rebranded something else but it's an old American valve and it is only the rectifier so really who cares anyway I'll leave you with that um, post hate mail in the comments below you know Let's let's get a bit anal over here and yeah, just post comments. Yes, thank you. See ya.